Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to integrate an Arduino and an iOS thing. And it's going to be over Wi-Fi. And this is, the module that we're using today is actually fairly cheap. This one is about 12 bucks. This one's about four dollars too, because this one is zero. This is a zero point nine version of No One View, and this is a one point oh version. There's not much of a difference, but this is the ESP eight two six six ESP twelve E or the twelve, and this is a twelve E. There's also cheaper versions like this ESP eight two six six zero one, and it only has two GPIO pins. And you need a serial to USB converter, like an FDTI basic from SparkFun. And this one is not breadboard friendly because it has two pounds four headers, and these you can easily fit on breadboard. And note that this is a little bit wider than this one, and this one cannot fit on a breadboard very well. It doesn't actually have enough space for the pins. So for this project, you'll be needing a breadboard, small, or it can be big, like this one. And then you'll need a micro USB cable, with this type. The thinner type of the micro USB. And then you'll be needing some wires. Actually, you'll only be needing two. And then you'll be needing an LED, which I have right here. And the color can be any type. And as usual, you'll be needing a computer, which I have over there by my side. And so let's get started. So today we're gonna to be using the ESP12E because I personally like it more and you can actually connect it better on the breadboard. There's actually one more space then the ESP12. In the ESP12, you'll need two breadboards actually to connect it. And you could just push push it into the breadboard. And for some breadboards, it's a little harder. But for mine, it just goes in like that. Next, you can take your micro USB cable, which I have right here, and plug it into our thing. And then you can take the other side and plug it into your computer. And it started flashing for me because I already have a program loaded on there. And we'll show you that program in a moment. So we're gonna take we only need two wires for this one. So we're gonna take one wire and connect it to ground, which You can see right there, and connect it to the blue terminal. Like that. And then take another wire, connect it to D0, which is actually the outermost pin, and you can connect it somewhere out there. And then you can take your LED. I'm gonna straighten these leads because I've used this LED for so I've already used this LED before. And make sure the leads are not touching. And you can just connect it up. Just like that. And then that's it. Let's go and program this ESP12. So let's start by opening the Arduino IDE. And this is really slow. We're going to start by, we're going to try this Blink program to see if it works. And we're going to modify it a little because instead of 13 we're going to do 16 and then 
you're gonna go up to tools and this is already selected to me for me and you see it's node mc 1.0 or 0 0.9 and you can get this board by going to preferences and you can copy this you can go to here and you can add this link and I will post it down in the description below if you need it for the board and then you can go to sports manager and you should find it right down here so let's and depending on what kind of serial converter you have you, it will show up as this if you have the CH340G which is a new chip that came out really cheap you can actually get it it's better than SD TDI chips or the Atmega 16U2 and it will show up like this and if you have the CH340G for a Mac you will need to install some drivers and again I'll post that link in the description below so let's upload and the upload on a ESP8266 is a little is a little different. Once it compiles and then uploads, it's gonna show that stuff. And when it finishes uploading, it's gonna do done uploading. Sometimes you'll get these or errors, and sometimes you'll get the warning ESP underscore com cynic failed or and error esp underscore open failed if you get those errors you can just unplug your esp8266 and it should start working unplug it and then plug it back in sorry so let's go over and check what's happening with the esp led so here is our blinking led it's right there i have to replace the led because the green one that I had before had two bent legs and didn't really work that well. So I'm going to use this, go with this yellow LED. And you see it's blinking. And if you look at that blue right, light right here, it's whenever the LED is off, it turns on. Whenever it's on, it turns off. Which is this pretty cool pattern with the ESP8266. And the next step is to make control it through the iOS app but first we have to upload the code to this ESP8266 and then you can make the app and you can control it so here is the code I have and I will put this code on github for you to download if you need to and the only thing you have to change is you have to go up to connect Wi-Fi and you're gonna select all this code and paste it before setup and in init hardware we're gonna do this to 115200 for the baud rate and we're actually gonna change this to low and then we are going to go down here and say digital right 16 low and then you can go ahead and upload this to our thing right here and be sure to put fill in your Wi-Fi stuff so here is the ESP8266 and we're going to find the IP address of this ESP8266. So I'm going to scoot my computer a little so you can see it. And actually we're going to zoom in a little to see if that helps a little. And what you're going to do is I'm going to set my baud rate, which you probably can't see, to 1500-200. And it'll say connecting to Linksys. And then it shows you the IP address. And in case my case, it is 192.168.1.122. And then you can 
we're gonna go up to Google Chrome and you're gonna we're gonna reload this page which already has the URL and then press reload and it turns the LED on we're gonna change it to zero and then press enter and that turns it off and you can keep on doing that so on and so on now we're gonna integrate it with our app so let's get started by going back to the computer so let's go ahead and we're gonna open up Xcode and this project is actually fairly simple to make an Xcode project so we're gonna start by creating a new Xcode project and I'm just gonna go I'm gonna go with the single view application and let's call it ESP eight six six twelve E tutorial. And it's gonna be such an iPhone and I'll save it on my desktop. And then we're going to go to main.storyboard. And we're going to create two buttons for on no I don't want to find something and then we're going to duplicate this so it says off and then we'll have a web view for the console place it right there and then we will add a label that says console and then that way we are going to create we're going to create an outlet and two actions for the buttons so that we can click them and the web view will have its own outlet I'm going to call it web and then you can we're going to create them for the on and off buttons so this is going to be on and this one will be off close off that and then we can go back here and each one we're going to create a URL that we're going to say equal to NSURL and then string and we're going to do HTTP 192.168.1.122 or your IP address slash LED slash 1 and then we're gonna do we're gonna create a a URL request. We're gonna set it equal to on us URL request. And it's gonna be URL. And then web dot load request URL Requi, and then you can just copy this code and paste it in off. That way, you can just change this to zero, and then we can run this. And then we can, sorry for that doorbell, we can go to the simulator, which we have right here, and let it load. We actually need constraints, but we'll worry about that later. So let's hit on. And this shows up, which is what I expected. Because we have to go to down here and add an add the app transport security settings. And then we're going to open this, hit add, and we're going to do allow arbitrary loads. And then you can actually, we're going to save this in info.plist, but we have to change this to yes. 
so yes and then that means you can allow all stuff other than HTTPS and then hit on and then it shows up in our console so I'm going to show you the <clears throat> LED but first let's add our constraints <clears throat> sorry for my voice and then we can just check our app to see if it's good and yeah it's everything centered so I'm gonna go over to the camera and show you when we press on and off the LED will turn on and off so here we have it we're gonna I'm gonna show you my ESPA 266 and we're gonna go ahead and this wire falls off all the time we're gonna go ahead and click on and then the LED turns on off off and then on you can actually look at the console if you like to actually has a pretty fast reaction because depending on how fast your Wi-Fi is which is my favorite thing doing linking LED through the web so guys this is the end of our tutorial right here and this is our little ESP8266 and if you want to buy an ESP8266 I will provide a link for, in the description below I've gotten this one off eBay for $12 around but you can actually get one for cheaper this one the one for, for the 0 0.9 I got two for nine dollars and this one was from US and the other one was from China and China shipping is a little fast a little slower so if you want to do this project fast, I recommend you get this one. Not this one, which I will grab right here. Although this one actually works pretty well too. And you can actually get a lot for a cheap price. So guys, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. And I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe and hit the like down below.